All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the acronym M Soon, making something out of nothing. My name is Kimberly Wright. Thanks so much for joining. Today is August the 30th, 2021, and it's Tuesday. All right, so today uh, we're going to be continuing our CD art. I hope you all are feeling cheerful and up and alive out there, even though we having some rainy weather, it's okay. It's still a beautiful day nonetheless. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started with what the, I think we're on part three or part four, part three or part four for our uh, CDR. And what we were creating were, was a uh, wind chimes or a beautiful ceiling hanging. I have several tools over here, depending on what you are uh, creating, that's what's gonna uh, let you know what type of materials you pretty much need. All right, before we get started, I wanted to uh, go over just a couple of things. And this class is all about uh, turning trash into treasure turning uh, things that you would normally probably throw away or discard something that you can uh, remake, refurbish, make it anew and beautify it. All right. So even though we are making a uh, CD art with cardboard crafts, these crafts are very, very beautiful. And I'm, uh, my craftsmanship, I'm working my skills to the point of making them look professional as pertains to someone would particularly buy the piece from, the, from a store if you had seen it. So that's how well I'm trying to, you know, complete my projects. All right. So today, our holidays and events, and this is the last day of August 2021. It won't be coming back, so cherish every moment. Uh, today is Eat Outside Day, Independence Day, International Overdose Awareness Day. International, oh, sorry, Love Litigating Lawyers Day, National Matchmaker Day, National Trail Mix Day, and World Distance Learning Day. So that was a uh, pretty good. Well, I wanted, I have an announcement. Um, I have to make sure, it, I don't know if it's on the calendar, so I guess I won't say nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even sure. All right, so let me show you what I have. What I'm working with today is my two moon pieces. And so beautiful. Thank you. What I wanted to do is, as you can see how I've tried to fill in each space as much as possible. And, uh, you know, just get as close as I could. And after that particular, after that particular uh, stage, what I recommend that you do is, right now I'm gonna take a piece of newspaper and I also was gonna be doing this heart wind chime. You can see I still have to fill in a couple of spaces here and there. I could leave it like this. However, I want it to be a little bit more completed. Again, like looking like I would buy it out of a store. 
And so at this stage, what I wanted to show you is that all right, you can use uh sometimes when you cut those CDs, some of the at the edges, some of them uh have like shards kind of like cracking up. I just decided to use some of those here and there to my advantage. However, I just wanted to show you, you have many options. However, I realized that I could take one of these disinfecting wipes, any kind you like afterwards, once it has dried to clean up the glue. So what I do is just wash over it in a circular motion so as to kind of clean up any excess glue that got on the top side or surface of the wind chimes, uh, sorry, the CDs. And I just make sure, you know, um, sometimes you can pull those uh, disinfectant wipes out of the container and they'll be really, really juicy or full of liquid. You don't want it to be overly wet, but as you can see, you can see the soap all over this. And I'm gonna save this cause I can use it again on another piece. And after that, I just grab some paper towel just kind of press it on there gently. And then I start to gently rub my finger over each surface. And as you do that, you can see some of the glue rolling or coming up, so to speak. And I just continue to do that until I have made sure to dry all of the pieces and I see that the glue is up. So it doesn't take that long. But as you continue to wipe each piece, you'll see on the edges, especially the edges, if you've left excess glue and the drying of it and the paper towel will help just rub that glue right up. So that's why my moon pieces look so clean. And if you see a little spot that you missed, all you have to do is just go back with your wet wipe or the disinfectant wipe and kind of clean it up. So I kind of looked over each piece of the surface, although I'm gonna go back and uh, at the pieces in these areas. But you can see how much more it's gleaming and shiny. All right, from that point, so I just want you to see that I'm going to continue, I'm going to continue on the heart, uh, the heart piece later. I just wanted you to see that I have cleaned all these pieces. Here. And then these, you need the two pieces that are gonna eventually come together like so. So that's why you see I haven't done anything on the back of these. But however, my smaller pieces that are hanging, they are completed on the back side. So as you can see on one side, I still have some pieces that I want to fill in, but this is the back side. And I just want you to see that I've cleaned all of these. I just wanted to show you how to clean them with the disinfectant white and dry them off. You have to dry them off right then and there. Don't let the water sit there because this is cardboard and you don't want it to water to soak into the cardboard or get wet. And I particularly have five little replicas or pieces or hearts actually complement my large piece for the uh, wind chime. 
So right now, this is just to show you that I've actually finished those. And I'm going to go to the back to the uh, moon and stars so that you can see where I'm at on that piece. All right, so as you can see, I've, I actually uh, made a few beads in my pottery class. These are handmade beads that were made out of clay. And I have several beads per se. And this is another bead that I made from the pottery class. So sometimes in pottery, you have to stilt the pieces on, uh, you have to put place the pieces on stilts and they pull a little bit and they have like little sharp edges where they were sitting on the piece. So rather than use them for jewelry on my neck or something like that, where I feel like the beads would scratch me, I decided to use these beads in my artwork. So I wanted to add a, a few beads on my uh, wind chime as well. So uh, beyond that, I've added, uh, I've added a few regular decorative glass beads. As you can see, I opened one 99 cent bag of beads and I'm just gonna show you how I basically uh, strung those. So, so far, I've strained about uh, three pieces, which each of my wind chimes has five uh, things to hang from it. This is the actual, oh, it is. This is the actual, let me find the end before it comes off. All right, let me come back. So this is the piece right here. And these are, are the three beads. I have like three beads hanging right here. And this is the actual bead that I made from uh, pottery. And then I have three beads right here. So pretty much I wanted to add, as you can see, some stones or some beads to beautify my piece. And I'll show you two more strings. This is another one, just simple. Has one bead right here. And then this is the bead I made from pottery. This is another glass bead that I added. So once all of this is put together, I think it'll look nice and natural and simple. Simple can go a long way sometimes. So this is the, I remember I said I had about five pieces for each uh, wind chime. This is, a piece with two beads here, then the piece, the bead that I made from the pottery class. And then I have two more beads there. So once again, you can see how that's pretty much turning and looking. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I strain, strung the beads on. I have two more stars here that need to be, the beads need to be strung on. However, first thing I wanted to show you is on one of the hearts. So I've put the strings in all of the uh, stars, but for one of the hearts, as you can see, I didn't completely finish here, although I'm, um, I'm not really uh, too concerned about leaving the space 
pour wherever I put the hole because I'm just going to hammer it in anyhow. However, um, you know, I have several strings. I have this gold uh, thread that I was thinking about using just because of the shimmering gold effect. I have this jute twine, which is like a just a little uh, uh, twine or rope. And then I have this uh, Omniflex, which is a high strength fishing line. And it's clear as you can see, you can see the thread a little. And what, I, what I'm using is you can pierce with a nail or anything that you have. I have an actual needle tool that I use from pottery class. And I just go ahead and find a center, sorry, a center space, which is the center of where I want the heart to hang. I could have a heart hanging off to the side like so, but this one, I want it to be particularly in the center. And what I have is this particular foam board, just so that the, uh, the actual needle can stick through that. I'm kind of piercing it where I want the hole to be. As you can see, it's already pierced. I'm taking a hammer and I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I know I, I hammered through because it's stuck. And so now you may not be able to see the hole or maybe you can, but there's a hole there big enough for me to go ahead and add this clear wire. I'm just adding it into the hole, looping it in and leaving just a little bit for me to at least tie. Um, I'm not really sure. Let's just go ahead and tie so I can see. I, I just tie knots until I feel comfortable that uh, that it's strong enough and it's going to hold. So that was one knot, two, three, four, and I'm making sure to pull pretty tight. And the actual uh, fishing line ties really pretty tight and so to me that's pretty strong as you can see me pulling it and the piece that's the tail that's left on there I'm going to clip that off what I'm going to decide to do so I'm going to just go ahead and cut this string away from here and I'm leaving it just a little bit longer than I would actually use so that I can make sure to tie knots beneath the beneath the beads that I want to hold in a certain place. So where the actual knots were, I'm making sure to also put a touch of Elmer's glue on top of that knot. So that that's just an extra um, form of security to make sure that that knot stays together over time. So that's how you, um, apply or put a hole in the particular piece. And so right now I'm gonna go ahead and string these two stars that I already, you just saw how I uh, applied the string. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and see where I want the first beat from the star to stop. And I'm putting my finger there and it's about right there. So what I wanna do, is since this is where I want the first beat to stop, I'm gonna go ahead and make a knot. And you have to be able to see the knots, the holes on your beads to see how large or small they are, to see how many knots you need, because you want your knot to be uh, thick enough that the bead won't slide over the hole. However, um, once you make one knot, the, for some reason, once you try to aim the actual uh, fishing line to that same knot, it really knots really uh, easily there if you've ever done the same thing to thread. Uh, thread is a little bit more harder. You have to kind of guide it. 
you got to guide this too, but the, for whatever reason, the fishing line, not much more better. And you can see my knot right here that just built up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my first two beads, which is gonna be this red flat bead that I chose because it looks like the bead that I made in pottery. And I chose this hematite looking bead just out of a regular little. So I want those two beads to come together like so. And then I want a space to stop where I want my next flat bead. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a knot there. So usually in pottery, the beads that I made, I made the holes much larger so that when they are fired, the holes don't close up with the blades. And so you can see how large this hole is. And so what I do, instead of continuing to uh, build up such a large hole, uh, a large knot right there, is I just go ahead and string the bead and where I want it to stop, I made a little knot. However, it's not going to hold it. I go beneath. I take the end of the, uh, the string and I go beneath the bead and re-string it again so it can just have like a, it's actually, a, it's creating a loop where it's going to actually just hold that bead in place like so. And so I'm going to find a space that's right next to that, or that is actually uh, spaced out evenly from these, the next beads and make a knot so that I can put my last uh, two beads. And so one important thing is that you're not, as you can see, I'm stringing all of the pieces that are gonna be hanging from the uh, wind chime itself or the larger piece, which is the moon, because uh, you cannot put the hole inside the, the top of the moon until you've actually uh, glued all your pieces in between here, because you have to line the entire piece up to actually get a hole. So that's why I haven't put a hole in that yet. Hopefully before class is over, I'll be able to do that. All right, I made a knot and I'm gonna put my other two beads on. So like I was saying, I already chose enough beads first for each string so that that would be one task that I already uh, completed and I can just move on to the next one. So as you can see, that's pretty much how that string looks. You have a wonderful, beautiful day too, Auntie Evelyn. Be safe out there. You can say something if you like. I think she gone. If you all have any questions or comments while we right here, feel free. I'm gonna go ahead and stream the next star. All right. So, Let's just talk a little bit as it pertains to, I'm gonna go ahead and string the next star, but ask you all a question about balancing and everything. All right. So as you can see, I have this, uh, this moon here. As it pertains to hanging the, uh, the stars and everything, since I have the strings on all of those, if I were hanging these hearts from this moon, I hope you all can see that. How would you, how would you, um, 
if you were hanging those hearts from that moon, how would you, anyway, which piece would you hang first and where? Go ahead, Miss Jean, you gotta unmute yourself, love. I think I'd hang the smaller one first. From where? From the bottom, right? From the there. bottom where? The bottom of the of the moon. The bottom like right here or right uh, here? No, 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 over here where your finger first was, right here, right, right there. Okay. Uh -huh. And then I go there and then I, I put the next one onto that one into that one, that one. Then I thought I'd go up to the top and maybe hang the big one so that it looks like the hearts within the moon, something, I don't know. It's no problem. The only thing is I like, I love your answer. However, what I would do myself is, and it's not saying that what you're saying is wrong. For example, you know the, you know the string at the top is probably gonna either, you can either do it at the tip here, right? right? Mm -hmm. Or you can do it somewhere like along this space right here. However, to, I, I'm just trying to say if this makes sense. If this was, if this piece right here is what I'm hanging, like, well, let me just use what we actually use so it don't become confusing. All right. This is the moon. If I am hanging, putting my string right here, so the weight doesn't distribute or turn some kind of way out of just being where I want it to be straight like this, then I'm gonna create a pretty much straight line. And my first string would probably be here. However, I'm gonna have the most weight to pull from the area that I'm hanging the top. So for my first piece, I probably would put my largest piece, which would be the heaviest one. That could kind of keep the balance of the piece going straight up and down. So then I would make my smaller pieces out to the sides of, the, of the larger piece. Because the larger piece, I want it to weight down. Yes, Miss Vicky. You could um, technically glue your string to the back of your piece and then um, hang Hold on one second. Hold on one second. It's not going to be glued to the back. It's going to be glued to one of these pieces and then yeah. it's really the inside so that then it'll look like it's enclosed. Okay, keep going. To make your string invisible pretty much so it doesn't show up on the outside of your moon. You could so that's what I was just saying. It's not going to show up on the outside. It's in the inside of the two okay. pieces, and then you put this, you put the two pieces together like so. Okay. Okay. But well, go ahead. I was I was just trying to. I explain thought you heard. I thought I heard you say that you were going to take the string and string it straight down. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm talking about from the top of wherever I string the top. Then the heaviest piece is going to okay. be coming in a straight line from okay. that to give it the right balance so okay. that it doesn't turn or change. Okay. I was saying what Miss Jean was saying wasn't wrong. However, I'm just saying that due to the fact of the balance and not. So it's sort of like if you hang, uh, this is your wind chime and then you hang a piece right here and it's too heavy, but then it, once it starts to turn. You're like, why did my heart turn? It could be because of the weight. So from the center, I would hang the largest piece. That's all I was saying. Is anybody creating uh, any of these, any type of CD art out there? Yes. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Jean said yes. That was a week, yes. It's okay. <laughs> You just have to keep going. Trying, so, trying, 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 trying. We on the we on the uh we on the third or fourth week, and I'm still working myself, so it's no problem. I'm just trying to have some. I'm trying to go slow enough to have a demonstration for you all to kind of show you what's going on, but also go fast enough to have some work done. 
So I'm stringing my last star oh. and I have my beads for the top of the moon. However, I don't want to string the piece for the top of the moon until I'm able to get the hole in it. I won't be able to get the hole in it until I actually glue all of the stars inside it and then I can put it together and then put the hole in both of the moons at the same time so that it's level. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Anybody have anything they want to show or share? I, I have a question, Kim. Are we going to have an art show? Because it yes. seems like we've done so much. <laughs> when the center opens, we ought to have an art exhibit or something. Yes, I would love to. We, uh, you know, uh, hopefully our art show that we really have every year is in May for Old Americans Month. And that doesn't mean we can't have another art show because we might just decide to have a recycle art show by itself. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, actually, we just have to just what that's why I was saying once again, you all take pictures of all the artwork that you make in. It might be something that you give away to people, but please take pictures of it so at least you can have a photo of what you've been creating. And, uh, you know, again, just enjoy yourselves. I mean, I've been creating a lot of work just because I'm an instructor. However, I try my best to do some things that I enjoy and get them finished because I'll start a lot of projects and won't even finish them. What? Yes. Yep. So this is the last star that I put beads on. It's going to look simple, but when I put everything together, it's going to look so beautiful. So I'm going to bring all of these pieces over here. And actually, what I'm going to start doing today is actually gluing my pieces together. And so I'm just kind of using this uh, counter as a board for me to see exactly where I want my stars to lie. So I know this star right here is going to be in the center. To to give my uh, moon the right balance. And then I'm gonna have, I just figured it out. I'm gonna have the two smallest stars kinda on the inside closer to the larger star, the largest star, cause they all descend inside. And then I'm gonna have, so as you can see, I have, as you can see, I have my largest star. I have five stars. And then I'll call this, I'll call this a uh, one. And then I have five and four. However, this, the one that's the smallest, the actual smallest, I'm gonna put number two beside that, which is gonna give about the same weight for a very small one and then the next size one right beside it. And over here where I have the uh, medium star, I'm gonna put the third star with it that might give it the proper weight that it needs. So that's how I'm gonna have them all lined up uh, glue to my moon. And so the glue that I'm going to use is going to be Elmer's glue and hot glue. And I did not want my hot glue just dripping for no reason. So 
I did not uh, plug it up, which I'm going to plug it up now. And I'll probably uh, start to glue those pieces inside one of the uh, pieces of the moon. So the first thing I have to do too, before I start to do that, is figure out which is gonna be the top side of the moon. And so just looking at it, I'm gonna put it together, the two pieces, just to see how they fit. See where I get the best fit. If not, just twist it around and see how that looks, which that's a much better fit. And so that's how I'm going to put it together. And now I'm just turning it to see with my eye which side I like for the top and which side I like for the bottom. So this is the particular side I like for the top. This is the bottom. I'm going to have that first string. Moving these to the side, moving those to the side. I think that's going to be perfect. So, where I want each string to uh, be glued inside the piece. I'm actually making a few knots right there to just give uh, some stability of where I'm actually, when I actually glue the string down so that it'll be an area that actually is uh, built up to actually hit the glue, like a, just a little knot. And I think I'm probably making about I'm tying six times to make the knot raised. Just maybe, well, let me see how six. I don't want it to be raised so much that the board isn't laying down flat. So I did just about three or four. And then I'm going to cut my string right there. I made these strings long. So the actual excess string, I can use that for my next wind chime. I'm just gonna sit that to the side. And right here at the end is where I'm gonna be applying the glue to go inside the wind chime. So really, young people, that's all I have for you today. Do you have anything to show or share or any questions? Anyone? All right, so one second. One second, young people. So anyway, I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, this week, although I'm going to double check. However, if you are interested, that's why I was like, I wasn't sure if I should make this announcement. If you are interested, I do have a new class that's going to be um, up, an, an upcoming new class. It's going to be on Wednesdays, especially if you already take my Word Up class on Wednesdays. It's Word Up is a class all about poetry, short stories, and spoken word. It's at 1030. And if you uh, have time or room for another class on Wednesdays, I'm going to be starting a class called Going Green. Going Green. It's all about... Uh, 
cons conservation, conserving uh, the earth. And uh, we're gonna be talking about so many different uh, useful uh, ways that you can contribute as an individual to conserving the earth and making things uh, better and not being wasteful. So this class, Going Green, is on Wednesdays at one o'clock. And then um, as far as I know, it was supposed to start this week. And so if you have a chance, you can uh, check in the class at one o'clock on Wednesday to see if the class has started. But if not, it'll definitely be next week. I thought they were gonna put it on the schedule. However, I didn't see it on the schedule. So uh, if you check into the class and it's not this week, that means it's next week. However, it should be this week. So please, if you want to uh, try to check it out. All right, so. Got one more thing to share with you young, beautiful people. Somebody has been giving me some jokes lately. And um, you know, as you once you get once you get as old as I am, some of you young people out there. <laughs> infant, infant. You probably heard all the jokes in the world. So I don't know why this person tried to make it seem like I was cheating on the jokes, but I wasn't cheating. It's just that I heard all of them. If they come up with some original jokes. Uh, and make them up themselves, maybe I probably wouldn't know the answer to all of them. Well, let's hear one. Uh, <laughs> just one, just one. Okay. All right. So did you know I was trying <laughs> to start a, uh, start a chewing gum recycling company? No. Yeah, I just need a little help getting it off the ground. Uh, -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> Miss G, oh, I can't believe you made that 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 draw. Well, you well you needed something after that. <laughs> uh, most people claim they re they you know most people claim they support recycling. But they sure get mad when someone reposts the joke. <laughs> That's okay. Stop, stop, stop. stop. She said, bop, bop. Stop. <laughs> I think that's enough. <laughs> hey, Jean, why does six, what? Why is six so afraid of, of seven? Because eight will come. Because so seven, eight, eight, nine. Seven, because eight, 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 why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. No. <laughs> no. This is stupid. <laughs> Jay, you're so silly. Y'all so silly. All right. Do you know the definition of recycling? Yes, yeah, turning something old into something new. <laughs> no, recycling is where it pays to be an alcoholic. <laughs> that mean the, it's like a joke. It's like if you're drinking a lot of alcoholic beverages, that means you got a lot of bottles and stuff to recycle. Oh, <laughs> I thought you. I thought you were embalming yourself anyway. <laughs> All right. Each, Kim, each yes. firefighter has an eye. Why? Let me see. Each fire, each firefighter has an eye. How many? Uh, how many eyes 
does a ballerina have? I, I don't know. How many? Two, Three. two, <laughs> two, two. <laughs> she has two eyes also, too. Two, two, two. That's just desperate. That's, that's, that's bad. No, no. I can't give that one a point. The firefighter has two eyes and a, and a ballerina has two eyes. Two, two. Two, two. Two, two. It has two, two. Two, two. Oh. Woo, I think we ought to stop now. I think we're going to the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> All right. So, uh, once again, if you don't join uh going green if you know somebody who's into that type of uh thing and or if you want to learn about going green it's going to be wednesdays at one o'clock thank you so much for joining uh making something out of nothing we're making continuing our cd art uh wind chimes i should be particularly probably finished with those two next week and we'll go into that other piece that was just going to be a wall deco or decorative design um, I love you all. Have a wonderful and blessed day and continue to recycle and beautify, uh, upcycling those things that you would normally probably toss, make something new out of it and give it as a gift. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Peace and love, everybody. Thank y'all so much. Peace, Peace out. out. Yes, ma'am. <laughs>